Yoga Express, the mobile stretch clinic that takes yoga to the people. We have before, uh, with us today four of our regular and wonderful guests. I'd like to introduce Judy Jacob to my extreme left in the yellow t-shirt, Amy Kitchener in the black shirt. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm the host for this evening. This is Deirdre Warner to my right in the white t-shirt and Lucy Benjamin in the beige colored t-shirt. All, all of us in today's episode have been with you before and we are trying to help you prevent common ailments. Most of us have experienced some form of one of these common ailments at some point in our lives before Today we're going to focus on sciatica. Before we do that, we want our audience to understand what are the primary principles of yoga. There are five main principles. One of them is the use of gravity to minimize the use of props. Now we use our body strength, we use gravity to help us get into different postures and different final positions so we don't have to use props. If you notice, we have a few props, but we seldom use them. We try to get in as deep as we can and just make the best of what we have. And that's what life is about, right? Make the most of what we have, come to terms with what we don't. The second principle of yoga is deep breathing to eliminate harmful toxins. The third principle of yoga is stretching of tendons to help release essential fluids, and you might ask, what kind of fluids? When you stretch your tendons, the tendons are the cartilaginous material, the cartilaginous muscle between the muscle, the actual outer muscle and the bone. The connective tissue is called a tendon. When that stretches, we are releasing all those feel-good juices, one of them being endorphins. And yes, yoga stretches can give you a very natural high. It's a healthful high, so why not? We're not putting anything into our bodies. We're just stretching to make the most of ourselves. The fourth principle of yoga is organ massage to improve, improve blood circulation. So when, where our mind goes, energy flows. You've heard that before. So when we go into the forward bends, we are massaging our internal organs and sending fresh blood with it, fresh oxygen, to optimize their function. And the fifth principle of yoga is concentration. Concentration helps us channel a restless mind. We are going to help you get into stretches that would help alleviate sciatica today. Sciatica, as you know, impacts the back of the legs, the back of the upper thighs. Basically, the spine, at the lower back, the spine divides itself into two large veins, the sciatic nerves, which run from the back and from the inner thigh all the way down. And in fact, again, before we started, we always have a little bit of a discussion. I did speak with uh, Judy. Judy, would you like to tell us of any experience of someone who has experienced any sciatic pain? Mm -hmm. I have a personally experienced sciatic pain, and it was very painful. I always had a bad back, but I was in a car accident that just like pushed it over the edge, and it involved the sciatica. And I had a shooting pain down my leg. I tried everything. I tried acupuncture, I tried everything, and nothing seemed to help. Well, I hope today we can help you, because after today, once you know which are the safe stretches right. to help sciatica from recurring, mm -hmm. if you practice it every now and then, you are already strengthening. By stretching the hamstrings, you are strengthening your sciatic nerves at the same time. So we're going to do a lot of forward bends today. To Understand what sciatica really is. Sciatica, we spoke, Lucy and I spoke about that too. It's a pinched nerve and there is intense pain because of the pressure of the nerve of the vertebrate pinching on an inflamed nerve. Now, if you're uh, the nerve, the spinal cord that comes through the vertebrae, if that is inflamed at any point and there is a vertebrae pressing on it, then you feel a pinch and that actually causes kind of a radiating pain in your sciatic nerves. Some of the causes of sciatica are pressure on the nerve root, trauma, as Judy has experienced, injury, strain. Some of the symptoms could be tightness, numbness, tingling, and tenderness. 
So when the discs between the vertebrae rupture, the sciatic nerve is exposed to pressure and pain. So postures that stretch these nerves offer a lot of relief. Before we go ahead, Lucy, would you like to expand a little bit? Did we talk about the uh, pinching of the nerves before we got started today? Well, what we talked about what I said is that I find that anything relating to the back is very easy to stretch the hamstrings and you probably relieve much of it. Yes. Without realizing that it's actually working the legs and the hamstrings and the back is releasing all of that tension in the, in the uh, spine. So. Right. So we could have standing stretches, we could have seating, seated stretches. Yes, and that's what we're going to help all of you get into some of these stretches. We don't have to go into the final positions. But the very fact that we are trying will get us there. Let's all try posture number two, Pada Hasta, hands to feet. Let's stand up. Who would like to, Amy, would you like to be our first demo person? Okay. All right. We'll face this camera here. In profile is always easy so the audience can see how we do this posture. It's hands to feet. We've already been through this posture before. So we actually, we, we'll go into that one next. Uh, it's heels together, toes slightly apart. What you're all, you're gonna keep your palms facing your thighs and keep your knees firm, not too stiff, not too tight. Inhale, take your hands up to shoulder height with your palms down, keep inhaling. Slowly turn your palms inward and keep going higher, keep inhaling. Heads raised, look up and then you're going to fold from the hip. You're going to fold forward and go as far as your toes or wherever your hands would take you today. Exhale as you fold from the hip. Keep exhaling. Make the connection. If you don't touch your toes, that's fine. If you touch them, that's great. As long as you touch some part of your leg, maybe your ankle. Make the connection, Judy. Touch, get to your ankle. You're fine. Yeah, that's great. Hold for a few seconds. You should feel a nice, beautiful stretch. Can anyone talk in this stretch? Yes. Deirdre, yes. tell me, how do you feel? Can you feel the stretch? Make the connection. Touch your legs wherever they go. Can you feel any stretching in the back of yes. your thighs? Um, mainly the hamstrings. The hamstrings, right. And the sciatic nerves themselves are getting stretched because they're on the inside of your thighs. They keep going. So when you stretch your hamstrings, you are also working your sciatic nerves. Inhale, come up. Hands in front of you. Take your hands all the way up. Overhead, exhale, bring your palms to the side. Keep exhaling, bring your hands to the side of the body. Relax. Thank you, Amy. Deirdre, would you like to try posture Veera Bhadra Kona? Veera Bhadra, as we've heard, is brave warrior. And Kona is Kona, taken from the Latin root. What we're doing is once we get into the brave warrior posture, which I think Lucy is very familiar with, and Deirdre, you've, you've not practiced, but I know Lucy has. Once we get into that, we're also doing a nice, deep twist on our side, on our obliques. So we're gonna, let's all go sideways. Actually, this, this time you may want to face the camera this way because you need the mat. Yes, let's all, the others, all of us, the rest of us, go sideways on your mat. Take your feet apart as far as you can, about three to four if you're tall, like Deirdre is, go apart a little more, Deirdre. See how Judy's got it? Lucy, Judy, now. Turn your right foot out to the right side and your left toes go slightly in, a little bit, just so you, it's like putting your brakes on, so you want to make sure you don't slip. Now, right now your knees are going to be straight. Keep them straight now, okay. Now inhale, bring your arms up, look forward, bring your arms up. As you exhale, you're going to bend, no, uh, oh, I'm sorry, only I'm up sorry. to shoulder height, no problem, only up to shoulder height, I should have been clearer. As you exhale, you're going to bend your right knee. Bend your right knee. You're very tall, so maybe you want to wiggle your right foot further forward. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Good. Now, you're going to try and come. Keep exhaling. Try and come as deep as you can. Maybe you can get your thighs parallel to the floor. Very nice. Now, turn to the right. Look right at the end of your fingers, at, the, at your fingertips. Good. Inhale. Come up. Straighten your knees. Inhale. Look forward. Exhale. Bring your arms down. Keep your feet where they are, don't move them. Now turn your right foot in and your left foot out. So with your right foot, you're putting your brakes on. 
So here's what Deirdre is going to do. This time, before I give you the instruction, Deirdre, I'll just uh, explain what's happening. This time, Deirdre is going to bend <coughs> her left leg at the knees as she exhales. Exhale. Inhale, bring your arms up. Now, this time we're going to transition into the corner, the corner posture, and then we will go to the other. Actually, we will stay in this for a moment. Just experience Veera Bhadra. Inhale, uh, look to the left. Inhale, come up, straighten your left knee. Turn your left foot in. And now, now that you've experienced Veera Bhadra, we are going to take it into a slightly deeper twist. You will, you can already feel it in your hamstrings. Amy, do you feel it this time? Um, yeah. You do? <laughs> Good. The inner thighs. The inner thighs, exactly. Because we are stretching our legs apart so that the inner thighs are where the sciatic nerves are running right through them anyway. I am on this mat which is slipping. So I'm going to go on my mat. Now that you know how Veera Bhadra is entered into, we're going to enter into that, hold it, and I'll talk you through the next step of Veera Bhadra Kona. Take your right foot out to the right, put the brakes on with the left foot, exhale, fold, bend your right knee, and go down. Look to the right, and now as you keep exhaling, bring your right arm in front of your right knee. Go down all the way, your left arm comes up. Keep going, good. Uh, you want uh, in front of your right foot. Very nice. And keep your palms facing forward. This time we're going to have the palms facing forward. And look up. Very nice. You should feel a nice stretch in your obliques on the left side. You should feel it in your quads strengthening. And you would feel a wonderful stretch in your hamstrings. Inhale, come up. Inhale, bring your arms up. Very nice. Now turn your right foot in. Turn the left foot out. Exhale, as you exhale, bend your left knee almost perpendicular to the ground. Keep exhaling. Now, keep exhaling even more. Bring your left arm in front of your left knee. Your right arm goes up, right arm faces out, left arm faces out, and you turn to look up at your right palm. Very nice. Now, when you do this each moment, each time, we will give one extra instruction. Bring your chest back, your right, uh, oh, no, 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 your arm straight is good. All right, very nice. Inhale, do you feel the stretch here? Yes. Very nice. And you should feel a nice stretch in your hamstrings as well. Inhale, come up. I actually, can you hold that for a moment, Deirdre, you're sure. okay? Yes, I'm going. I just want to show where the triangle is. This posture actually has a triangle in many different places, but you're looking at the whole body. This is one angle, this is another angle in the triangle there. You can form, you can, Look for the triangle anywhere. You have a triangle in the gap between your waist and the armpit. You have a triangle between the legs. So inhale, come up. Very nice. Straighten your left leg. Turn your left leg in. Exhale, bring your arms down. Thank you, Deirdre. I think I know. The next one is Lucy's favorite posture. So we're going to have Lucy demonstrate that for us, please. Ugra, it's a very intense posture. Not only is it Lucy's favorite posture, it's also one that you do extremely well. Oh, which one is Ugra, the one, <laughs> <laughs> number eight. We <laughs> talked about it before we started, right? Well, that's fun, that's fun. Yeah, I, I yeah. think you love it. Okay, oh, yeah. we're gonna face the camera with your legs apart, two to three feet, actually three feet, even more if you can. As long as you can feel the stretch, you don't feel a tear if you, <laughs> if you hear any muscle tearing. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> no, we, I'm, I'm kidding. We're never going to do that. We're going to be very safe. Now, in this position, you want to put the brakes on with both your feet. So turn your toes in with both your feet. Now, I'm on this mat, so it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to get on my mat, take your legs out as far as possible. Now, the way Lucy has her hands on her hips, that's a good way to start. Now, make sure you tighten your pelvic muscles. Bring your hip forward just a little bit, chest out. Look up, chin out. That's it. Very nice. Now, this time what we're going to do is we're going to bring our hands all the way down. After raising them overhead, we're going to bring it down all the way. We fold from the hip, and as you come down, you will exhale. And your hands will be between your feet. So inhale, take your arms up to your side, up from the side, up to the shoulder. Keep inhaling, palms facing down. As you go above the shoulder, turn your palms to face each other. Keep inhaling. Now, fold from the hip, come forward. Make an L with your body. Fold, 
come forward, exhale. Place your palms on the floor between your legs. Now, once your palms are resting on the floor, very nice, Lucy, once your palms are resting on the floor, you may want to wiggle your feet further. If you think you're not going to slip, you can go down as far as your legs would help let you take you. Keep exhaling when you go down. And then when you want to come up, press with your palm, bring your body up, have your body pause at midpoint, look forward and then slowly wiggle your feet together a little closer so you can come up with your arms extended in front of you. Keep inhaling, forward. Keep going up, take your arms all the way up, keep your back straight, very nice Judy. Exhale, bring your arms to your side, keep exhaling. Bring your arms all the way down by your side and then wiggle your feet closer. Very nice. Thank you, Lucy, I'd like you to say something. You did that beautifully. It's my favorite because it seems like that makes you limber all over after you practice after a few, many times, of course. But it's very limber. You have, you're using the inner muscles here, the, you're using the back, you're using the back, you're using the arms. Everything is involved, and That's I like right. that. And then, of course, beautiful. the down going is good with for all the, the blood going to your, going head, to your head because we're always quiet. on a stand up. So right. it's a lot of uh, and it's fun because yeah. it doesn't seem difficult once you've got yourself a bit limbered anyway. And when the blood goes to your head, you know how every time well, for people who do headstands, they say when they come out of their headstand, they feel so wonderful. And people who do headstands yeah. constantly, they never seem to age yeah. because it's the deep. blood is always going to the brain, right? the oxygen going. Right, it just keeps moving around in the body. So it does feel wonderful. As long as we do it safely, we're fine. We, will, we could enjoy any posture in yoga. The next one is a very relaxing posture, number 10, but it does involve movement of the legs so that your sciatic nerves would feel the stretch. Uh, can you, would you like to do that, Judy? Have you done a demo yet? Number 10, Kati Chakra. It's this one. Yes, this one here. Kati chakra is spinning wheel. Chakra is wheel, kati is basically loose or spinning. So Judy, you can face this camera so they see you in profile because here your feet are not too far apart. That's good, that's enough. Feet are about 12 inches apart. And all we're doing is, there's a little bit of a breathing technique involved in this. We haven't really gone into the breathing technique specifically, but in this one, I'll just teach you. Take both your hands, palms facing down, bring them in front of your chest. Okay. No, that's it. Inhale. Exhale. Now always, when you're in a position where your feet are apart, make sure your toes are always just a little bit in. You never know when accidents happen, so we want to be careful. This time, what we're going to do, and I'll just talk you through that before we do it, we're going to take our right arm out, turn our upper body, turn the torso as far back as you can, and as we do that, we're going to exhale. Then take your right arm back in front of your chest. And then take the other arm out. Now when you do this a little rapidly, you will feel the sciatic nerves also stretching with you. So let's try that. Let's try that. Right arm goes out. Actually, your legs will turn. As your torso turns, your leg will turn, although your toes will be facing in. Amy asked a very nice question. You're very soft. Speak up, Amy. Um, do we have to do anything with our legs? Right. There's no movement of the legs, but you will feel your legs, when they turn, you will feel the sciatic nerve stretching. I'm glad you asked that. Both your palms down in front of your chest. So we're going to go a little faster this time. Go back as much as you can. Take a full breath out. Inhale. Happens. Keep exhaling. After a while, you like how this makes you feel and then it's hard to stop. So after a few more rounds, just think of ourselves as little spinning wheels, wheels that are spinning energy into our bodies. Okay, how does that, did you feel the stretch on, your ins on the insides of your thighs? If you didn't, that means you may want to go even deeper. You should feel the stretch. You feel good, after a while it's almost fun. Actually, it must be good for the waist, too. It's yes. very good for the obliques, absolutely. Nice. It's very good for the waist. It's a nice, uh, you know, stretch on one side and a compacting on the other. Very nice. 
Now don't forget to breathe. When you go out, you exhale. You come back in, inhale happens. Exhale, inhale happens. Now relax, bring your arms by your side. <laughs> Otherwise we won't be able to move to the next posture. Thank you, Judy. Whose turn is it? Deirdre? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to attempt posture number 13, Uttita Pada. Uttita Pada, Uttita means raised Pada's foot, again from the Latin root. If you can't remember the word Uttita meaning means up, just think of you, Uttita, up. You for up and you for up. Anyway, those, those are Sanskrit terms. You don't have to worry. You could just call it raised foot. And now, uh, Deirdre, do you want to face this mic you go towards Judy? OK. What we're going to do is you're going to raise one leg out all the way. So what you'll have all your weight on the right leg, and we'll raise the left leg first. Once you have it halfway up and your knees are bent, you reach for your toe, and then you extend it all the way, as far as you can. Now, to get your balance, you can keep your hip hand on your hip. Let's try that. That's all right. I'm here with you. And it's always nice. We help each other out in class, too. So that's fine. Now, take your uh, hand, left hand. Hold your inner right big, left big toe, and now bring it out as much as you can. I'm gonna come on the other side. Very nice. Hand on your hip helps you with the balance. Okay. Now, try. That's fine. If that's what you want to do today, that's fine. You want to try and get it out. Maybe if you did, that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> now you can feel the stretch, right? Yes. Okay. Good. Keep exhaling. Inhale. Bring your foot back. Very gently release it. Coming in and out of a posture, Lucy can go up, very nice. Lucy can go up without help, without the help of her hands, which is great. Holy, and if you, but if, will you, do you feel the stretch when you go yes, up? Yes, absolutely. Without, you feel it. Yes. So we, the rest of us need a little bit of help. So we're gonna use our hands to hold our toes. Now, take the weight on your left leg, and this time you're gonna raise your right foot. So bend your right knee, raise your right heel, Take your hand in front of you, in front of your right knee, hold your big right toe, and then start bringing it out in front of you. Okay, nice, very nice. You should feel the stretch, that's it. And now bring your chest out. Yoga teachers are like dentists, right? Get you in all these messy postures and then say breathe. Inhale, if you come out, go right back in. Okay, inhale, you're good to balance? Let me go see if I can get you there. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, so try that. I want you to do very nice, Amy. Good. That's it. Extend. You should feel the stretch on the inside of your thighs. Very good. Inhale. Come back. Release. Very nice. Thank you. As long as you feel the stretch on the inside of the thighs, which are called the adductor muscles, you are stretching your sciatic nerves as well because they go right from there. I don't know. I'd like to track them down. I think they go behind the calves as well. Who is our next victim? Amy! <laughs> ah, Parvatasana. Did you say this is your favorite yes. one? No one does. She said immediately she wanted to go into that. Okay, this posture is called Parvat, or mountain. And again, Lucy and I had a little bit of a discussion, so did the rest of the group. Names, Sanskrit names for yoga postures sometimes can be very different. For instance, in some schools they teach you this is Parvat, this is mountain. Lucy has learned it that way. Some schools, Parvat is the posture, what we call down dog, over here. So we're going to go into a down dog position. Basically, it's a full, forward fold of the whole body. You invert into a V, or you make yourself look like a mountain. OK. The, keep your heels together, toes slightly apart. Palms facing your thighs. Inhale, come up to shoulder height. Then your palms start facing each other. As you go up, keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way up. Very nice. The way Judy is done, look up. Now you can clasp your palms together and you're going to fold forward from the hip. And instead of touching your toes, you're going to go touch the mat. You're going to go to the floor about two, one foot away from your feet. Then you will walk your feet back. Keep exhaling. Now place your palms on the floor very slowly. Take your legs back to make your body into a mountain shape. Keep exhaling. Very nice. Now this time I'm going to come out of this posture and just demonstrate to you. 
This is where the hamstrings are. Make sure your heels are on the floor. If you want maximum, like your heels don't touch, that's fine, but you want to make a connection. So, man, okay. as long as you don't slip. Okay, you should feel a beautiful stretch in the back of your thighs. That's your hamstrings stretching. And yes, and may, actually maybe, Amy, you just want to bring your head out just a little bit. That's it, not too much, just, that's it, beautiful. Very nice. You want to make sure that you don't strain your neck. Very nice. How do you feel? Do you feel the stretch in your, uh, the back of your thighs, Deirdre? Yes, I do. Okay. You know what? Maybe I should have asked you to turn to face the camera because yeah. you're slipping, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, turn around. Turn around. I want you to feel the maximum stretch. We have a couple of minutes left. Come into it. That's okay. Just okay. come in and then wiggle your feet back. Just want you to feel the stretch. The rest of you can inhale. Come up. Judy, I'll take a block away from That's good. Good. Inhale very slowly. Come up with your back straight. Keep inhaling. Now, you could come up in two different ways. That's it. Very nice. The way Judy did was what I had instructed, but the way Amy did, too, is fine. There are schools that teach you to roll your body back up. I think it's a little easier to come up with a straight back because your posture is apart. Your hands and feet are a little apart. But if you've already brought your hands and feet closer, then yes, you can roll your body up. Thank you, Amy. We have... Time for one more posture. Actually, we should be able to do two more and then we're done with the sequence. So let's all do this together. Let's sit down. Now this one is called Supta Namaskara, Supine Prayer. Namaskara is prayer. Supta is supine from the Latin root. Your feet, legs are extended, feet are flexed just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is just do a nice oblique twist. So when you twist to the left, you're going to go forward, exhale, bring your head, forehead down as deep as you can. You will feel a nice stretch on the obliques on your right side, but you should also feel a beautiful stretch in your hamstrings. Don't take your butt off the floor too much, though. Okay, place both your palms to your left. Keep exhaling. Bring your forehead as close to the ground as you can. Inhale, come up. Inhale and come up. And then let's go to the other side. Now you should feel the stretch in your left leg when you bend down to the right. You'll feel the stretch on your right leg when you bend down to the left. Inhale, come back to the center, and we're all, along with the music, the closing music, we're all going to go into the plow position with your back to the camera. I'll try and talk you through this one because they're closing titles and they're locking us out. So, now remember, inhale, bring both your legs up. Keep your hands under your butt, palms facing down. And then, as you raise your butt, use your hands to lift your butt off the floor. You exhale. That's it, very nice. Now, place your hands behind your butt, give yourself some support, and then keep going back all the way. See, if some of you, Lucy, may be able to touch her toes to the ground. I'm happy where I am today. Inhale, come back up. Support your butt. Come down very gently. Do not lift your neck off the floor. The head must always stay on the floor to be safe. Keep exhaling. Bring your legs all the way down. And for those...